Okay, let's see. Time to go through the checklist. Your ticket is right here in this little folder for you. Here you go. You got your big bag checked. And so that's on the way to the airplane right now. Your carry-on is right next to you and you're wearing the personal item. Okay, looks like you're all set. You are good to go, my friend. Hey, are you okay? But don't shake your head at me, you look sick to your stomach. Do you need to sit down for a minute? <laughs> No, you're good, don't worry. I looked at the clock on my phone and it says you have plenty of time before you even have to get close to the airplane. So, alright. Lay it on me. What's going through your head right now? What do I mean? What do you mean? Or what do you mean? What do I mean? Uh, it's too early for this. <laughs> I mean, you've been talking about this trip ever since the dates have been established. And it's all you've been able to talk about up to this point. From the preparations, to helping you find where you're going to stay, to researching the culture, the locations, everything. And then, now, you can't move. You're suddenly frozen. What's going on? Hmm? So you got what I like to call the travel jitters. <laughs> well, yeah, because it makes it sound less scary. But... No, I understand. Being scared when you first time, or well... Whether it's your first time or your tenth millionth time, you get a little nervous. It's perfectly okay and totally normal to feel that. Oh yeah, most definitely. Not only do travelers get nervous, but I'm sure pilots get a little nervous too. The weather's a little unpredictable sometimes, and so they're always trying to think about the best ways to deal with any worst case scenarios that might emphasis on might and still most likely won't happen <laughs> me no don't let my traveling experiences fool you just because I've been all over the place many times gone on buses, cars, planes, whatever, I still get nervous. Oh yeah, totally. It is always a little nerve-wracking going to some place you're not familiar with. But that's part of the fun of traveling. You get to experience new places, new food, new cultures, new ideas, new who knows what everything as long as it's not the same as where you live it's always going to be a little scary but always super fun don't get it twisted i never said you couldn't be scared just don't let that fear stop you from experiencing new places you will be fine you have people that you're going to meet, and, well, even if it takes them a while, you're going to be in a new place. You could take that opportunity to explore and get familiar with your new surroundings. Hmm? Oh, definitely. There have been plenty of times where people who I've meant to go over and visit either got busy last minute or just straight up ditched me assholes <laughs> but I still took that moment to not let it get to my head and just decide hey I'm gonna go explore I mean since we have the 
technology that we got nowadays, we can Google anything that we want. The nearest bakeries, the coolest attractions nearby, local pubs, hole-in-the-wall restaurants that have the best food, you name it. You can find it. So it's not like you're going to be bored. You have a whole set of information about where you're going right at your fingertips. And you can also pick up brochures and little papers about where you're going and things like that. What I'm trying to say is there are plenty of things you can do in case original plans don't pan out the way they should. Hmm. An experience of my own? Oh man, do you want close by or overseas? Because I got stories of both. Alright, well, let's see. Oh, alright, so my second time in South Korea. I was planning to meet up with a friend of my sister's. Sorry, I was trying to remember. A friend of my sister's who also worked with her for the summer. And she had gone back to uh, her family because there were some complications with her parents. I think it was something about them being sick and she needed to go back and take care of them. But that's not part of the, the story. Well, kind of, but it's not the forefront. So anyway, I am ready to go and see her, and I'm on my way to her place, and she suddenly texts me and says, Hey look, I just got run down with the flu. Yeah, I thought that's what you were thinking. Oh, she's so fake, she just was trying to find a way not to hang out with you. First off, ouch, I am a joy to hang out with, and you know that. <laughs> I'm just messing. But no, she was genuine. She sounded sick on the phone when I called her to see, you know, if there was anything I could do. And she felt genuinely bad, like really bad. And I felt bad because she felt bad. So I just told her, hey, I'm going to bring over some tea. I'm not going to stick around because I don't want to get sick. She said, oh, I totally understand. And then I said, I'll just figure out something to do. And so when I did go over there with some team, she directed me to the closest shopping space along with where we were originally going to eat, which was this cute little hole-in-the-wall type of restaurant that was actually really, really good. I mean, you're right. All Korean food is absolutely delicious, but you know what I mean. I was a little sad that I couldn't hang out with her, but her health was important. Besides, everybody was having the flu around that time, so even I was wearing a face mask to avoid getting breathed on by people who were sick and still had to walk around. Oh yeah, I'm not about to be bedridden during a vacation. That just does not sound fun at all. You're right. Even if I was sick, I still wouldn't be in bed. I would be walking around, making myself even worse. But hey, it's traveling. It's part of the fun. Living life on the edge, you know? <laughs> getting sick. Getting lost. Forgetting what you need to do. It's part of the fun. Don't worry, you will be okay. You will be lost, and you have people to meet up with who will take care of you. And I'm sure if they promise to take care of you, they will follow through even if they are going to die the next day from some sort of grave illness. Oh yeah, it's totally different from what I experienced because she and I were just going to meet up for a meal, not stick around and take care of me or anything. Besides, I don't get taken care of, you know this. I prefer learning things on my own. <laughs> but I totally, totally digress, I am sorry. Look, 
everything that you are worried about. The plane, the flight, the currency, the culture, whatever it is, you've researched all of it already. So you are perfectly prepared. You've got your passport, your ID, you've got everything you need. You are set. Even if you're missing a couple of things, that's not the end of the world. There are convenience stores all around the place. Places. Locations. And you will find what you need. And if it's something bigger, well, you have my number. I have everything set for you, as well as your family and a couple more of your friends. So just contact us and we will help you out. Okay? Good. You are going to be fine. Alright? You're going to have fun. And I will smack you in the face if you don't. Because this is what a vacation is. A trip. An exciting adventure. And if you can't go have fun, then that's not very exciting or much of an adventure. Good. Now, let's see. Now that my speech is out of the way, this is your first airplane trip airport experience, so it can be a little nerve-wracking, but don't worry. I'm going to tell you exactly what needs to happen and where you're going to go. Okay, I'm going to bring you through the TSA stuff first because that is always the most daunting part of this trip. Or at least it feels like it your first few times. Because they're basically x-raying you and making sure you're not carrying things you're not supposed to. That barcode on your ticket right there is what they're going to scan. Make sure you have your passport and ID out or and or ID. Um, and when you go up to them, just give them a smile and say, hi, how are you? There's not usually many people who are kind to them, so if you're kind to them first, it throws them off a little bit and then they're nice to you. Just a little tip. <laughs> Once you get through that, you just take out all of your electronics, your cords, like your phone charger, laptop, the charging cable for that, earbuds, well, maybe not earbuds, but do it just in case, as well as your all the things in your pockets, take off your shoes, all that fun stuff. You put it on that conveyor belt. It will be fine as long as you listen to everything, no sharp objects, um, if you have medication, you put it in a bag, with the prescriptions, certain like, what is it, four fluid ounces, only in one bag, unless you got that all in your checking, and then you're good, that can be any size, and of course, no weapons, because, you know, no weapons, <laughs> <clears throat> once you do that, just listen to their instructions, it's pretty straightforward, you are good to go, and again, just smile and be nice to them, it throws them off, and then they're polite. Now, let's take a little closer look at your ticket. This is where it might get a little confusing if you're not used to it. But trust me, after this you will be a pro. There's your name. There's the from and to. So where you are now is the from, obviously. And the to is where you're going to be. The flight number is important because that is what you're going to look for on that giant shining screen over there that looks like a grid of numbers, letters, names, and words. That board is going to tell you what your gate number is, even though your ticket says it. It's always good to double check. So find your flight number as well as the name of your airline. Yeah, that one. And then read the departure time as well as the arrival time for your plane. Just find your flight number and it will tell you everything that is on your ticket. It's usually the same, but just double check. You can never be too careful. Now, sometimes they do switch gate numbers because either 
the plane before it hasn't left, or there's a complication, or who knows what. Don't freak out. Like I said, look on the board. And if you're walking towards your current gate number, and there's a gate change, they will turn off the music and make a very loud announcement on the PA system just so that you can hear it, or you and anybody else moving around. Like I said, it's very rare, so try not to worry about it. It'll be fine. All right, lastly, the boarding time. You will be fine here. That is not the time that your plane is going to leave. That is the time that you are going to get onto the airplane, find your seat, and prep yourself to go. While you're at the gate, they will give you periodical announcements saying when the plane is there, when it's time to line up to board, as well as when boarding time begins. They usually let the veterans uh, first class and families on first, and then once that's done, it's time for the normal people. <laughs> Just stay in your line, don't stress out, and when you get up there, hand them the ticket, boarding pass, I keep forgetting that's what they call it now, the boarding pass. They will rip it off and give you the small piece, which shows you your seat number and letter. Once you get on the plane, find that number and letter, and that's where you'll be sitting. Just don't forget to put your carry-on item in the overhead bin, and when you sit down, put your personal item under the seat in front of you. I mean, they will tell you that once you get on the plane, but I'm telling you now just so you're prepared. <laughs> when you do that, just relax. Listen to the people around you. If somebody sits next to you, you don't have to interact with them, but smile if you need, if you feel it's necessary. And then, when it's time to go, just sit back, relax, let the pilots do their thing. You will be fine. Once you get to where you need to go, the pilots will let you know when the plane is at a complete stop and when it's okay to get up from your seat and line up to leave. Now, personal suggestion is you don't get up right away, especially if you're by the window seat. Let people go in front of you and just wait until the line dies down a little bit. The plane isn't going anywhere until everybody is gone. So just wait, and once the line clears up a little bit, pick up your things, get your stuff from the overhead bin, and then you can head out. It's a lot less of a hassle, so... That's what I prefer doing. Once you're finally off the plane, just follow the crowd. A lot of people are going to be leaving and heading towards the exit anyway. And once you get there, it will be at the arrival gate, and you will either hail a taxi or find whoever's picking you up. Meet them, and you'll be good to go. Oh, and don't forget to stop out at the currency exchange spot, because you'll need to do that. It'll be fine. Tell them it's your first time, you have no idea what you're doing, and they will be super kind to you and be willing to help you out. Yeah, of course. There's nothing wrong with asking for assistance, especially if it's your first time. Or, well, even if it's your tenth time, just tell them it's your first time anyway. And they'll help you out. I promise. So, you ready to go? Alright, good. Come on, give me a hug before you go. Ah, I am going to miss you, but you are going to be fine. You're going to have fun. Just remember what I said. You'll do great. Don't forget to take pictures and send me videos, because I will wish I was there with you. And while I can't be, I'll live vicariously through you. Now don't forget to text me once you get to the gate, as well as once you get off the plane so I know you're safe, okay? Good. I'm going to miss you so much, but this is a new journey for you. A new adventure, and I am so excited to see the photos you bring back as well as the stories that you have of this adventure. Now go. Be safe. Be careful. But most importantly, be open to new experiences and have 
fun. I'll be here when you get back, I promise. But don't worry about me. Go and enjoy your trip. <laughs>